Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're going to talk about something that's a fusion of a few technologies we've talked about recently and then a few that we've talked about uh, like weeks ago. And I think it's cool because it's a multimodal representation, so it's doing things with prompts and visual input, and it's pretty novel, so let's get into it. We've covered NERFs in the past, um, NERFs just being a really cool way to represent 3D space. Uh, our video that garnered the most attention so far was uh, the Unrecord video, which was an Unreal Engine 5 game that used uh, NERFs or neural radiance fields to represent uh, most of the environment that the game happens in. Um, so it was a cool way to show, like, look, this is how realistic NERFs are. It's better than just, like, the laser scanners that realtors are scanning houses with. And, yeah, this is another awesome tool that allows working with those systems. And uh, what's cool is you can give it a NERF, it will um, segment it and then give you a resultant nerf on the backside. So we've covered some previous models that you can give a prompt and they'll produce an image uh, in the form of a nerf. So a 3D image or a 3D representation of like a car or a chair, something that, you know, with a single shot, you couldn't really just guess. And this model builds on that in a few different ways. So at a high level, uh, the way this process works is it's using uh, the segment anything model from Meta, which is sort of funny because they don't mention that initially. They just say, yeah, it's segment anything in 3D with nerfs. Um, but they are using the SAM or segment anything model from Meta and then adding kind of a visual component to that. And the high level flow is um, you provided a nerf. It takes a image of it, so a single perspective, uh, then you prompt what you want to extract. So in this case, this uh, like triceratops head. And then with its sort of uh, iterative process, similar to some of the nerf synthesis we've seen before, it will extract uh, the, the features you want and give it to you in the form of a nerf that is um, completely constructed single shot. So single image, single prompt, single result. And the way this works is pretty simple. Um, like the process in total is obviously pretty complex, but uh, basically you have this layer of uh, SAM in between, right? So you're feeding it still just images, which is what SAM is good at. Uh, so they didn't reinvent the wheel here. And they're saying, yeah, look, you give us, you, you provide the image. Um, we infer sort of some different angles. Then we apply a mask. So it's saying, the mask is just saying, based on that prompt, this is what SAM says we want. This is what SAM says we don't want. And this is fed through recursively. Um, each loop, it reduces a little bit of what it doesn't want and looks at a different angle of the initial nerf. And eventually, uh, after in times looping through this, uh, once we've reached a confidence level, it is provided as its own nerf. Um, so they're coining this uh, SA3D or Segment Anything 3D. Uh, it's single shot, or they say one shot here. Um, what else do we want to cover here? The way they go over this, or the way they sort of really talk about the meat of what's going on, is they say, um, yeah, so the obtained 2D segmentation mask is projected onto 3D mask grids via density-guided inverse rendering. So that's, that's a lot. But basically it's saying they're using SAM to project a 2D mask onto a 3D object, or a 3D representation of what's going on in software. Um, this procedure is then executed via an iterative manner, so it's iterative, uh, while accurate 3D masks can be finally learned. And by learned, they just mean uh, understood well enough that they can produce a resultant nerf. Uh, so they have some cool examples here. Uh, the cool thing with this kind of process is, uh, and the whole idea with segmentation in general, is extracting a specific object from an image or video, and then being able to consistently do that within lots of different environments. Um, and this might seem kind of boring, like, oh, cool, you can like highlight the this tree or you can highlight this pair of shoes. But this is a pretty core problem in computer science that's been, that people have struggled to solve for like more than 30 years probably. And um, up until maybe two to three years ago, uh, it was unheard of to be able to do this single shot without pre-training in like a known environment. So for instance, if you're counting cells it used to be that you'd have to train in that environment of just counting cells or, or just counting shoes or just doing something on an assembly line. And this works single shot, uh, any environment. And what's crazy is these are basically 3D environments you're giving them. 
Um, the tree is cool because they're all these little, or the fern is cool because they're all these little leaves. Uh, they're very sharp edges. Um, and the background is all over the place. Some of it's lit, some of it's in shadow, some of it's reflective. Um, a lot of times these models used to get confused with reflective glass, especially in a nerf. Because if you think about it, this glass can just reflect another part of this tree and it is perfectly cropped out except for the very, very back, but that's in shadow, which is where these models struggle. Um, and then there's some 3D printed objects, it looks like. Yeah, the, all right, so the uh, the outdoor table demo is one of my favorites because uh, they go around the entire thing and I would have to guess that this had more iterations than a lot of these because many of these if they're they're planar in that there's like the plane of the windows behind the dinosaur and then to the side which is kind of interesting uh really cool here is they can show you um similar to like the facebook or the meta videos what the model is actually seeing and this is cool because generating these would be hard because you have to extract at each step what's going on to understand what it thinks it wants to take and also have a prompt that will kind of make this work. Um, so saying like flower petals or um, flowers that haven't bloomed yet is something you would maybe have to do. And that's it. So their demo is pretty succinct, but I think this is an awesome showcase of um, taking something like a prior known workflow. So in this case, Nerf Synthesis. Uh, taking a new open source tool from Meta, which open sourcing stuff is a pretty new thing for Meta. They've been doing it for a while, but um, people forget that React, like their very, very famous front end framework um, for a while was actually closed source. Um, yeah, so it's cool to see existing workflow, new open source tool um, put together, not reinventing the wheel really, um, coming together to make um, something that is genuinely multimodal. So nerf input prompt input nerf output um and yeah i think this is awesome uh it's really cool to see stuff in in the nerf space take off uh, just because i think there's a lot of genuine value even like business wise there uh, for gaming for real estate all this stuff um and i think you know more and more as time goes on it's getting easier and easier to show people uh, or explain to people that like AI stuff is more than just generating goofy images on Midjourney, um, and that a lot of this stuff has tangible value right now. Um, it's just not quite baked into a product yet, which is totally okay. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys thought this was interesting. As always, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.